Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, June 27th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 33 through 40, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Brethren, all the saints through faith have conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, 37 and 38, and chapter 19, verses 27 through 30. The Lord said to his disciples, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Then Peter said in reply, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. What then shall we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last and the last first. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today, we celebrate all saints in the history of our church. It's not in November that we celebrate that. It's actually today, and the reason for today is because it is a week following Pentecost. Pentecost gets an entire week of celebration. Yesterday was the conclusion of the Feast of Pentecost, and today begins the just the one day feast of all saints. And so in the epistle to the Hebrews, we see example after example of people of the old covenant who followed after God in various and sundry ways and endured and suffered many torments in serving God in the way that they did. But as the writer, St. Paul, says, they were not given the gift that we are going to give. Instead, they will get it the same time that we do because of the matter of the incarnation. The incarnation of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ actually puts into historical time the time of our salvation. When is that time? The day of his resurrection. So when he rises from the dead, he has released all of those who were captive in Hades, held captive in Hades, He released all of them, including all the ones that were attested to in the reading that we had this morning in Hebrews. That's why he says at the end, all those well attested by their faith did not receive what was promised since God had foreseen something better for us, which is the resurrection of Christ. That apart from us who follow after Christ, but still because they are obedient and loyal and um holding strong with the faith that they have in God, the Father, they also will come with us and be made perfect. Apart from us, they should not be made perfect. That's concluding the sentence that St. Paul wrote. And so what we have in that, then, is the matter that they will be made perfect, 
but not before Christ's triumphant resurrection from the dead. So we stand in their shadows. We are not worthy of them. There are so many that endured so much that the only way that we could be made worthy of that is to follow in their own footsteps. And so we see in the gospel today this very cryptic statement that if we deny Christ, he will deny us before the Father. And if we do not pick up our crosses and follow him, then we will also be seen as not worthy of Christ. And then he has this really, well, it's for America anyway, and for today's society, since we are so wrapped up in the idolatry of God, family, and country, as opposed to just God, he says this, which is the perfect response in many ways to this idea that somehow family, even though family can be important, it is not the central focus of Christ's ministry. And so what do we have? We have, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And then he says later, he says, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children, moms and dads, or lands, lands, for my name's sake, I will, will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last and the last first. Now, let me make some things really clear. The first is, that this is not to say that Christianity and a land, America, Canada, wherever, are naturally disposed against one another. However, I think it is pretty clear, once you study the scriptures, you look at the life of the church, compare it to the missions and goals of many nations, you will see that there are points of common agreement, but there are also rather drastic points of disagreement. And so when you decide what you should do, you need to follow what is the one that will lead to eternal life, not to one that will lead to relative calm in this life. Let me go back to the Hebrews thing and read it there. But in addition to that, the whole issue of father and mother, hopefully fathers and mothers, when they do their education for their kids, when they help raise their children, raise their children to be faithful in Christ. Hopefully, the parents and, and how to love. And what are we called to do? Love God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love our neighbor as ourself. When we do those things, we find life in those things. Okay, well, if parents teach their children how to do that, great. But if they don't, and the children grow and they grow in Christ, they may discover that their parents really don't have their best interest in mind. The great classic example of this in the life of St. Tecla, whose parents really wanted her to marry royalty. And when they got to the point where um, Tecla was supposed to be married off, she ran away. They actually hired people to, to chase after her, to persecute her, and, and honestly to do not so nice things to her because they wanted the things of this world more than they wanted heavenly things. And so that is a classic example of how father and mother do not have the best interests of their child in mind point is that God smashes all idols and family can be an idol. Patriotism can be an idol. It doesn't mean they are, but they can be. And when they set themselves at odds against the teachings of Christ, against the will of God, then indeed that's exactly what they are. And what does God do? God smashes idols. So God help us, and may we be given the opportunity to make the right decisions in all the things that we do, following after him with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbor with everything we have. And may God bless you on this All Saints Day today and always, actually, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. And thank you very much for joining me today, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.